What's going on people? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another episode of Things We Learned. This is the show where we look back on whatever the previous Chelsea game was. We take in a couple of the key talking points and we sit here and we delve further into it and we try and discuss what could be causing either a bad turn in form or what could be the reason for why we're 13 games unbeaten, which is exactly the position that we are in right now. Yes, we've taken another W, which was going to be a surprise to absolutely none of you guys. And we're really getting used to this at this point. 13 games unbeaten. We're going into a pretty dangerous period of the calendar, the Christmas period with a lot of fixtures coming up. But the good thing is we have a game against Krasnodar that means absolutely nothing. So we just get to stat pad a couple of appearances and maybe a couple goals as well, depending on how much we're into the scoreline. But we're already through and qualified as group winners. So the game means nothing but a much needed rest to a lot of the members of the first team. But... We're not here to talk about Chelsea Krasnodar, we're here to talk about Chelsea 3, Leeds United 1 and what a performance against a pressing side which I said was one of the things I was waiting for. We had an amazing run of form in the 4-3-3 formation but we were facing a lot of teams that preferred to sit deep against us and give us a lot of space. So it was interesting to see how Chelsea would fare out against a team with a different dynamic to the way they played and we got given a bit of a shock at the start of the game, I can't lie, but it was about how we reacted to the shot and we're going to delve deeper into it in this video but I am very happy with the way that we played in that game. I think a lot of players passed that test of flying colours and we're going to delve a bit further into it in this video. So before I start Start. as per usual if you guys haven't done so already please hit that like button press that subscribe button and hit the bell notification button as well get yourself that little hat trick and yeah let's go straight into things we learned from Chelsea 3 Leeds United 1. First point I want to talk about and I want to talk about our mentality and I did hint about that a little bit in the intro but we're going to delve into a bit deeper here and this game against Leeds showed the second time in recent memory where Chelsea went behind to an early goal the other game being the Sheffield United game where McGoldrich got his yearly goal against us but another interesting thing was the reaction and it's always interesting to see how we react to these sort of situations because we're not falling behind recently now especially compared to last season the amount of times where we'd be dropping goals due to defensive errors or kept attacks and it was good to see Chelsea didn't start panicking because if there was any time to panic, I mean straight out of the back conceding a goal in the first minute to a counter-attack against a strong lead side. It looked like we were in for a serious game on our hands and last season we would have definitely overcomplicated things. We would have overcommitted players, we would have left too much space exposed and got exposed to another counter-attack. And last season, Bielsa would have walked all over us. But this this season, it's a completely different Chelsea side. And we've got the confidence behind us as well, where we know if we can see the goal, it ain't really the end of the world. If any of you guys were watching our watch-along yesterday, as soon as we went 1-0 down, all the rival fans started jumping in, trying to mock it, and nobody cared. Well, I know for myself, I didn't care because... We've got 89 minutes of football and we have one of the most dominant sides in the league right now. There was plenty of time for chances to be created and early on into the game, even after conceding, we were already making chances. Reese James was popping crosses into the box. Olivier Drood was asking questions of the Leeds United defence and it didn't take too long for Chelsea to get an equaliser but I was really, really happy with the way that we could, that we came back after going 1-0 down because it, it wasn't anything too deep on the grand scheme of things. A little bit of indecisive from Edouard Mendy. It's the first little bit of bad play I've seen from him and he didn't even put a foot wrong towards the rest of the game so it really just looked like a blip but first point strong mentality from Chelsea. I love the way that we didn't overcomplicate things, we didn't panic and we just kept playing our usual game and we let ourselves break them down because we knew exactly that they were capable of it. It was just could we keep our heads straight and that's exactly what we did. Our second point we're going to talk about Kai Havertz and we're going to talk about his form in recent games because he is starting slowly and he does he hasn't looked at his best in the last game against Leeds but we also need to take context into the situation. We are going to throw a disclaimer, yes, his performance was poor against Leeds. We're not going to sit here and try and defend it or sugarcoat it. I like to think I'm honest. I try and stick to the same positions every single time. I don't try and flip-flop, but... Kai Havertz, he, had, he did look off the pace yesterday. We're going to be real about it, but context is also key in the situation. This guy is still recovering from self-isolation, and even though he produced an 8 out of 10 against Sev 
Sevilla, which we can also take into account as well. Maybe starting him two games in a row wasn't really the best idea. Recovery from the Rona really isn't as easy as we make it out to be. And there are many side effects to this virus that we do need to take into account. I'm going to drop a quote from Paul Pogba as well because he's also been another player that's had to come back from Rona as well. And he said, it's hard to explain because you wouldn't understand. I got tired quickly. The first game of the season, I couldn't run. I was trying. I was very short of breath and it took me a long time to get back into shape. Other players like Mohamed Salah, for example, have also struggled to recapture their, all, their old form after capturing the Rona. And I feel like that's the same thing we're seeing with Kai Havertz because he really looked off the pace in that game. He looked slow. His reactions didn't seem off the pace as well. And he struggled against Leeds United's press. There was plenty of times he was being dispossessed. And it's the thing. Uh, hopefully with the Krasadar game, which is now so much more of a blessing in disguise that we absolutely smashed Sevilla. It gives him another rest, but we do need to be a bit more patient with Kai Havertz. He's had a frustrating start to the season. I think there's been periods where he's been in amazing form. The early periods where we where we first tried and tested the 4-3-3 formation against Burnley and Sheffield United. He was amazing in that run of games. Especially the little period of time where we had him in the number 10 role. I think he was amazing in that sort of role as well. We weren't really struggling based off our attacking play at that point. We were more struggling off the two DMs and trying to transition from defence to attack. So it's not like Kai Havertz has just ghosted this entire season. But but it's definitely been, he, he's definitely been in and around in phases. And here's the thing. We understood that it was going to take a little bit of time for him to adjust. And he is still adjusting. For the most part, he has had his solid games. But same, but same way, he also does need a bit of patience. And he does need a bit of time. Also, one point I want to discuss before I move on to my next point. Is if you want to take a look at Kai Havertz's career numbers in the Bundesliga. In his first half of the season, throughout his time in the Bundesliga. He had 54 games, only 18 goal contributions. And 225 minutes for goal contribution. Whereas, his second half of the season, 64 games... 40 goal contributions and that was at 122 minutes per goal contribution which only shows that Kai Havertz definitely turns up more towards the running which means there's a lot to look forward to towards the end of the season which also means patience and let's be a bit calm when it comes to Kai Havertz. To call him a flop right now is absolutely ridiculous. He's had seven goal contributions so far this season in 14 appearances which isn't bad numbers no matter what way you want to try and sugarcoat it or look at it. For your first season in the Premier League or your first half of the season those aren't bad numbers so I think Kai Havertz does deserve that bit of patience I think his form has also kind of earned him that patience he hasn't looked like a flop he's just looked a little bit inconsistent but he will come good just give him the time honestly third point and we're gonna talk about Reese James the best right back in the league and he just had yet another stunning performance yesterday this guy is churning out eight and nine out of ten performances and he really isn't being given the credit he deserves probably just because he's been put at full back but also same way the amount of the amount of prop i was seeing go trent's way over the last few years i would like to see the same energy for reese james as well he stood head and shoulders above a team of overperforming individuals yet again and like i already said earlier genuinely the best right back in the league trent alexander Alexander Arnold is quality, Wan Bissaka is quality. But I think if you combine both of them, you get Reese James. You get defensive solidity and an absolute demon going forward. And it's hard to run, it's hard to come up with new words to describe this guy because he's consistently producing solid performances. Credit to Hakim Ziyech as well, because he is also a huge reason for why Reese James is balling up. That link up on the right hand side is chaos. And the first half of and for the first 30 minutes of the game before Ziyech came off injured, they had no idea what to do with the pair of them. Ziyech was just creating so much space for Reese James to run in behind. And with Olivier Drew, his crosses weren't being disrespected anymore. He found a cross straight to his head within the 30th minute. It was a near post beauty as per usual. But it was a link up with Hakim Ziyech that caused that. And even when Hakim Ziyech came off injured and we lost a little bit more of that extra movement for Reese James to find space going forward, it still didn't really hold him back too much. He was still defensively solid and an absolute brick wall to try and get past. Going forward, the crosses were still a massive threat, whether he was more of a deep-lying cross or if he was going further forward. 
nightmare to try and get the ball off and literally any sort of positive superlative you can use to describe this guy is possibly effective right now because he is firing on all cylinders and he is looking impossible to try and beat defensively or offensively. He is 1v1 defending also. It's reaching Azpilicueta level and we know how good Azpilicueta is on 1v1 defending. Positional intelligence is also getting smarter and smarter. He's finding himself in the right place at the right time every single time. And yeah, best right back in the league, Reese James, you already know, man. Final point, and I'm going to talk about N'Golo Kante. Now, I've already put my hands up. I've said I am happy to take the L on this one. N'Golo Kante has proved to me that I am a lot more confident to see him in the lone DM position now. I said all I wanted to see was how N'Golo Kante would work against the pressing side, and if he would produce those same near man of the match performances against the pressing side compared to a team that would give him space, and that's exactly what he did. First off, I did think he was getting dragged out of position one too many times, the same way he was covering for Kai Havertz, who wasn't really on form that day. Second half, though. Like, first half, N'Golo Kante was good. Second half, N'Golo Kante was ridiculous. And he probably would have won man of the match if that was the same Kante through the first half. His passing through the press was smart. I thought he was very intelligent in the way that he played. I thought, what else? His ball progressions were ridiculous. I think he had the most ball recoveries, most ball progressions, and most tackles. I'm, I'm going to check, but like he was he was top for at least three of those stats. He was absolutely ridiculous today. and Yeah, he definitely proved me wrong, and I'm happy to say that I can be proven wrong on this one. I think I might have underestimated how much this guy's improved, how much this guy's improved going forward under Maurizio Sarri and the, and the job he actually did for him going forward, but it's helped him so much in trying to assimilate into his centre defensive midfield role. And I thought, he would, I thought he could be a DM, but more later on into his years when his legs expired because I didn't. I thought he, if we played him in a lone DM role, he'd just be sitting a bit too further deep and he wouldn't be able to have as much influence on the game. But you know what? Fair play. I will hold my hands up. I will gladly say I was wrong because now I don't think we need a DM as importantly as I thought we did. I still think we could do with one for depth, but it's, it's nothing too deep. Right now, N'Golo Kante is firing on all cylinders. The system also benefits Kante really well because it hides some of his insufficient parts of his game. And it also means that the passes forward are more focused through Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma, which takes away that part of N'Golo Kante's game and allows him to focus on more of his strength. So I'm happy. I'm happy. I've got no complaints. Again, you lot can tell me I'm wrong in the comment section all that you want. I don't mind. I just stay consistent. Here's the thing. You'd rather me tell you the honest opinion than me just bullshit you and tell you that I think N'Golo Kante works from the start because I didn't think that. I'm happy to be proven wrong. I told you what I needed to wait for to see for myself. I've seen it for myself. It balled out. I'm happy. So, hands up. I will take the L with pride because that's the best thing for the club anyway and with 13 games unbeaten. But guys, this is the end of things we learned from Chelsea 3 Leeds United 1 let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts down in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and I'll see you guys later take care and up the Chelsea